Hello, Mark Ostwald from ADM Investor Services International. And I thought as we're coming towards the end of the second quarter, a much better quarter than it had been uh, seen in Q1, uh, it might be a good idea to see where we are in terms of uh, US financial conditions and indeed in credit spreads, both in uh, the US and Europe. So my first chart uh, is the Bloomberg US Financial Conditions Index. Uh, as one can see, um, it made a significant recovery, all way, almost back to the zero mark. Um, but since uh, the beginning of June, we've really not made much further progress despite all the Fed liquidity programs. Um, most notably this week, we um, had the latest data on the Fed's Main Street lending program showing that as yet, that program, especially designed for small and medium-sized enterprises, has not yet seen any extension of credit, despite it being at 37.5 billion. That's somewhat disappointing. And that probably also is reflected in that financial conditions index, not in managing to make any improvement. So how do things look in the credit arena? Uh, the second chart is the uh, US investment grade versus high yield credit spreads, a familiar chart, uh, which I post quite often. And again, it tells a pretty much the same sort of story. Uh, we've seen a huge improvement. We almost got back to the sort of levels that we saw prior um, to the COVID-19 shock. Um, but we've been basically going sideways ever since. And indeed, in the high yield arena, we've actually been going slightly wider. Um, in dollar terms, uh, it's also worth having a quick look at um, how things look in the emerging market space. Uh, so the third chart today is the emerging market bond index, the JPM one, uh, as compared to the Barclays US dollar, a high yield Asia index. And of there, what one can see is there has been a steady improvement and it has persisted all the way through June, even if the momentum there is clearly starting to fade quite substantially. Uh, but that's encouraging. Uh, doubtless, it's uh, related to the fact that uh, with those high yield spreads and the, the emerging markets spreads as a whole in dollar terms, uh, there is quite a lot of carry and therefore the attractions are all too obvious as long as we have a relatively speaking steady dollar. If we start to see some currency volatility, that will change. Um, so how about in the um, euro um, space? So the fourth chart today is the euro investment grade versus high yield credit spreads. And as one can see, it's pretty much the same sort of sto story that we've seen in the US in the dollar space. Um, there has been basically a sideways move through June after the a uh, big improvement that we saw through April and May. Um, <clears throat> but out of late, we're starting to see some widening in those spreads. And I think what one can say safely on that front is the, the message from this is that all that central bank liquidity doesn't necessarily guarantee that companies uh, remain solvent. And this is really where the challenges are with a number of, insol well, number of insolvencies in the states at its highest level particularly in the high yield space since 2009, and a not dissimilar picture um, in the euro area. So for my final two charts today, um, a couple of observations about volatility, which obviously needs to remain quite low if financial, if financial conditions are to remain, uh, relatively speaking, um, okay. Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily benign. Um, and we, in both cases, we've basically seen we recovered to around the 25 to 30 level, but we've been ticking up higher of late. And I think that's a trend which is likely to persist if yields remain high. Finally, my last chart is just a small observation that the S&P 500, as much as it seems to be going to the stratosphere, doesn't seem to be able ever uh, to get away from the downward pull from oil. And as we can see in recent months, um, the S&P is very much in lockstep with oil prices. Uh, so those are the thoughts for the end of this quarter.